Hello, I'm Brian Kinsman. This is the AP885 case study when ethics and policies collide. Uh, here we summarize the case. Uh, James was called to the assistant principal's office to discuss James' third tardy of the week. James' fifth period teacher reports on the way to the office that James was stopped and handed something which she believed to be drugs to David Ramos. We don't address why she thought this was drugs or what this was based on, but regardless. Principal Inman has a meeting with the boys, to which he invites the school police officer. David was questioned about the aforementioned handoff, and he remained silent. David is then searched by the police officer, who produces a set of brass knuckles from his person. David is then immediately handcuffed. James speaks up, claims that David was carrying the weapon on his behalf and under threat of assault. But James is then handcuffed as well, and both boys are taken to a youth detention facility. Uh, Assistant Principal Inman calls the parents of both students involved. Uh, James's mother seems um, frustrated and disinterested, whereas David's mother is frustrated and emotionally invested. She comes into his office. Here, the assistant principal doesn't have a great answer as to what happened and why, but directs her to the detention facility. Uh, one week later, we see James is in uh, alternative education, alternative suspension program, uh, whereas David is back in school. The director of secondary education orders the principal inmate to file uh, the expulsion, and if he is not, he would be officially reprimanded. Section 2, let's look at the legal and ethical issues. If James threatened David in holding the weapon, he has been harmed materially, legally, and possibly mentally as well. I think uh, assistant principal inmate caused David undue anguish by sending the officer to retrieve him from the class rather than a school official. I think this was lightly considered. The consequences of Principal Inman's decision to include the officer in the meeting caused David and James uh, harm. On its face, David did possess a felonious weapon and made the decision to do so, but it is, is it ethical to punish him for it? Assistant Principal Inman does not treat the boys equitably in his decision to not expel David from school. That could open them up to some more problems. If the officer is acting as an agent of the administration, his search of David may have been illegal. We will consider that later. Assistant Principal Inman must weigh his personal ethical obligations against the unwavering zero tolerance policy of the district. This case study presents the difficulty of a building a building level leader faces in making choices that are oriented within a framework of sound ethical and legal decision making, and the challenges that the consequence of those decisions present to their personal and professional relationships, even when a leader may feel as if they've appropriately modeled ethical behavior. This is a challenge all leaders will face. And even if you feel like you made the right choices, you might end up in a situation like this. We have the people involved here. Assistant Principal Inman, first year administrator, cultivates relationships with troubled students. James, a male student who's troubled uh, issues with violence and tardiness, although he's been improving in recent months. Claims to have threatened David into carrying contraband. Uh, David Ramos, male student. Uh, honor student stand up musician found to be in con uh, possession of the contraband weapon. School police officer, uh, arresting officer in the office during the proceedings, transports both of the students to the facility. Uh, the boy's mother, uh, James' mother, seems unsurprised by the situation. David's mother, however, is emotionally distraught, meets with uh, prin assistant principal Inman, and inquires about the school policy and its fairness. And the director of secondary education here. Uh, this is who orders Inman to proceed with the expulsion and informs him that he will be officially reprimanded if he does not comply. Let's look at the places and programs here. The take, case takes place in Rocky Junior High. It is during the spring season. Based on assistant principal Inman's description, one can infer that Rocket Middle School is composed of students from mixed socioeconomic backgrounds and those from the south side face a more challenging and violent existence. It appears students from this neighborhood stick to stick close to one another and may segregate themselves from the larger student body. This uh, uh, middle school follows a period model with students ranging from at least 13 to 15 years of age. From assistant principal in this description, Rocket appears to be a public school as it has a large contingent of students from the lower socioeconomic class. This doesn't appear to be a formal program, but principal Inman has an agenda to encourage uh, the education of students from the south side of town and help them integrate into the school's program through personal connections and sports. So, the situation presented in this case presents a conflict that is damaging to students, families, and administration. If, if they do not handle what they do next, 
that uh, damage could spread to both the district and community at large. Uh, they could stand to lose reputation as well as uh, uh, monetarily if they find themselves to be legally neg negligent or inequitable in its treatment of students. I'd like to learn more about the nature of the search taken by the school police officer. While students have a lowered expectation of privacy in school, police officers still behold the legal standards of acting as a state of the as an agent of the police as opposed to an agent of the district. Uh, I've included the case here. Uh, while the officer was invited into the meeting, he conducted his search with not at the direction of assistant principal Inman. This could create some ambiguity in the legality of the search. It shows how high the stakes are when modeling ethical decision making. A single lapse in judgment allows manageable situations like this to spiral out of control and cause more damage than they need to. This is the damage facing the stakeholders. The district may be open to legal action from David's family, which could damage the community as a whole. Assistant Principal Inman uh, faces damage to his career for his choices, and his uh, commitment to ethics also stands to damage his career. Uh, David Ramos faces damages for his decision, albeit under duress, to hold the weapon as well as the administrator's choice to follow the officer to allow the officer in the meeting. These consequences could reverberate through David's life, causing him greater amount of harm. James also faces these consequences. Uh, being written off as a dangerous felon uh, can really change your life. And somebody who faces trouble in their youth um, with a felony charge could really, really uh, hold them back. Having considered who may face damage from the situation, how they'd be impacted by it, I think there's a lot more to learn here. But as leaders, we're expected to make decisions with the information that we have. And I'd say there's enough here to make a sound, responsible decision. Let's identify the options and possible consequences. In this section, we will use the framework of ethical decision making to advocate for the best possible options. Option one, do nothing. <laughs> you can take no action here and let the situation play out however it would, as though you were never there. Option two, refuse to sign David's expulsion. Do not sign David's expulsion paperwork and allow the consequences to affect Principal Inman's career. Option three, call for a hearing to review the case for both boys. A hearing circumvents policy, but could allow the community a larger role in resolving the situation. And four, this is a more esoteric, but potential long-term uh, benefits. Review the role of the officer in the building. Bring a committee to weigh the value of having a police officer in the school and their role in escalating or de-escalating situations like this. Evaluating the options, let's analyze uh, the possible benefits and drawbacks before implementation. Option one, do nothing. Perhaps Inman doesn't have to make a difficult decision, but he would have to carry the guilt of his inaction and gives up on the uh, potential for ethical treatment of all parties, and he still may face uh, professional costs. Uh, option two, refuse to sign David's expulsion. If Perhaps maintains Inman's moral integrity, David may not face expulsion. Uh, Inman may be harmed professionally, and it does not address the root cause of the problems. Three, call for a hearing to review the case for both boys. I think this has a high potential for equitable justice for both boys, and and um, but the case may be ignored, as it happens sometimes in a in a committee or a hearing, or sometimes they redirect towards standing policy. Option four, review the role of the officer in the building. It could present this prevent this situation from happening in the future. Importantly, it could keep children out of the criminal justice system. Uh, and, but there's a potential dissension from some community members. You don't want to uh, make the school look open to a mass violence or soft on your hand. Uh, choosing the path pass forward, let's demonstrate uh, that we've considered the benefit to the stakeholders. I think the most glaring error in judgment here was made by Inman in his unconsidered inclusion of a police officer in the situation, having the police officer retrieve David from class uh, cause, probably caused David undue stress and anxiety. Inviting the officer into his office for the conversation essentially removed all of the principal's agency in deciding this problem for himself. Uh, his lack of consideration uh, brought these consequences on us, and it, he lost all avenues of resolving the situation in a way that he found to be equitable and just. Regardless, the, the best that Principal Inman may be able to do is have the case re-examined in a hearing that is managed by school election officials. He can't change what he's done, but I think he might be uh, ethically obligated to do what was in his power to negate the harm caused here. Uh, section 9. 
uh, implementing your decision, you know, you must understand the consequences when you implement a plan. So the path I'm going to choose here is based on option three, as presented in the previous slides. A hearing to review the case will require several outside officials and then cannot act unilaterally to accomplish this. The plan requires uh, Inman to make contact with several key administration officials, including the principal, the superintendent's office, and possibly the school board, and, and even perhaps members of the public might have to be at this hearing. If a hearing is able to be held, uh, both James and David, as well as their parents, would have to participate. The outcome of any hearing involving this many stakeholders is far from certain. In my experience, district-wide administrators uh, tend to be conservative in their actions and elected officials even more so. In order for this option to be the most likely to offer an ethical result, Principal Inman here is going to have to give a frank account uh, of his ethical uh, behavior and his failures in decision making. Even if he avoids official reprimand, this is unlikely to benefit him professionally. He has to get up there and, and say his piece for the benefit of the boys. Uh, regardless, I believe this course of action to have the greatest chance of restorative justice for those who have been harmed, even if the outcome of the hearing results in standard application policy, which it is perhaps likely, I believe those harmed will feel at least it was a fair consideration of the case. It, it will expose the flaws in policy to the gathered administration officials. And I think this raises the chance that these policies will be reconsidered in the future. If the family of David Ramos feels his experiences have been truly considered, I also think this will lower the chance of his family taking litigious action against the district. An alternative plan of action here to keep as a backup if Principal Inman feels like the, this option did not meet the standards of ethics still, unfortunately, this will likely have removed the issue of David's expulsion from his purview. He won't be able to make the same stand he would have been if he executes this option. Uh, but he will be able to state his objection to the gathered officials. I would then recommend that going forward, he redirect in his efforts in option number four, uh, examining the policy regarding the presence of school officers stands to provide benefits for the student in the future who may face similar situations. If you might not end up where you think you're going to end up, and, but I think that uh, Principal Inman here still has the potential to benefit many students going forward, and, and maybe they can review and establish a policy that involves just who the police officers work for when they're in a meeting with students, when they're in, when they're in a situation with students. Uh, that ambiguity there benefits no one. It doesn't benefit the school, it doesn't benefit the students, and it doesn't benefit the community. So I think that uh, reevaluating that is the best possible outcome short of the restorative justice for David and James uh, that could come from a panel. Uh, thank you for listening to me, reading as fast as I could, and speaking as fast as I could. Uh, I hope that this brings a new perspective onto this case and and uh, helps anyone listening uh, when they're facing a similar situation going forward. Have a nice day, and thank you for your time.